Hi, my name is Devin. I am a beginner cyclist and I'm here today to get quicker on the bike. Uh, we're gonna look at five ways you can get quicker as a cyclist. I'm here with the Olympic coach. Um, no better to get advice from Scott. If you wanna introduce yourself. Hi, Devin. Uh, yeah, in addition to being an Olympic BMX coach, I actually coach mountain bikes for a couple of years as well. A couple of world championship medals in there and I also raced myself on the professional circuit for about 10 years. So I've got a bit of a background in mountain biking. I can maybe help you out a little bit. <laughs> First, I'm gonna go downhill with my current experience and see <laughs> how fast I can do it. That was a lot of fun. I mean, I don't know my time. <laughs> and he's not bleeding. Yeah, I'm he not bleeding, fun. I made That's it down. It. Yes. That was a lot of fun. Uh, going down that segment was a lot of fun and we're gonna improve a lot, but I guess starting off, uh, we start with bike fit and the necessary clothing. You've got your bike, you wanna get the best out of it, right? So let's set it up so it's most suited to you, your riding style, your body size, etc. So, you know, you start with all the important contact points like grips, brakes, pedals, seat. Make sure they're in the right place. And that means adjusting your handlebar height through your stem or through the angle rotation of your bars, moving your levers in and out to make sure that you're actually getting them uh, with full power of brakes while still got control of the handlebars. Uh, depending if it's two or four finger brake or one finger brake, you, know, you need to position it so it's uh, you can grip the brake, grip the handlebar, and not have to compromise anything. Get the angle of these in the correct position so your elbows are up or down or in or out, depending on your style. We'll talk about body position later. Make sure they're the same uh, angle and location. Um, then we talk about pedals. You know, we've got these, the Entity is a PP20 pedal and 20 is the amount of pins it's got in it. So it's a very grippy huh. pedal, grips uh, your flat soled shoe. Then your saddle or seat height, it's got to be, basically you you look for the uh, benefits of like the seat height for pedaling efficiency to start with. Mm. That's your starting point, right? Same as like a road bike or a mountain bike, they're very similar. Uh, but then when you get into more extreme mountain biking, you want the seat to be able to drop away and you can either have a dropper post on your bike or you can actually just flick this lever and lower it for, for your descents, right? Um, but again, we'll get into more detail with those finer points later. Uh, the angle of the seat's generally flat, horizontal. Um, you don't want to point it up because it'll hurt some body parts that don't want to be hurt. You don't want to point it down because that'll kind of, it'll cause you to slide forward on your seat a little bit and could upset your back as well your tire pressure uh it's a bit of a personal preference but it, there, there is a, a standard you know depending on your body weight and whether you're running tubeless or whether your terrain is rocky or smooth or hard or flat or burned etc i personally i run about 23 in the front and 25 in the rear in most cases uh, slightly harder in the rear because most of my weight is on the back your tires make very good suspension and if you get the right contact patch, they make very good, uh, a softer tire makes very good traction, but too soft will mean the bike is very squirrely and unstable. Uh -huh. So you, you can't go too soft. And you also, if you go too soft, you might get a pinch flat or a flat tire. So finding that middle ground, um, but you know, starting around the 30 to 25 to 30 range and then find your, your groove from there. Mm -hmm. That's another part of the equipment that is important, it's your clothing. You don't have to go to extravagant ends with your clothing, but having something that's practical, like I've got you know, good protective clothing here, I've got good clearance for my seat, um, I've got a good grippy flat-soled shoe that matches the pedal that I'm using. Uh, I have a, a cycling cargo short underneath, so I've got po pockets built into the back here. 
Um, I've got plenty of pockets for tools and spares and food and bananas and car keys and phones and things. I mean, when we're talking about going faster or having more fun or um, you know, more control, but, you, know, we, you want this sport to be safer and you to feel better about it, right? Yeah. And the better you feel, the, the faster you will go because you get more control and more confidence and they all grow together. Um, so it's not like being fast, that's like the end result, okay? Yeah. It's all the steps in between that bring you the reward and the feeling and, and the work you put towards it. So initially you want everything to be ready to be able to respond. So you need your elbows bent, right? And this, you know, some people call it the attack position or whatever, but basically you need to be ready to respond. And if your elbows are straight, yeah. it means you're already, you're locked. You've only got one direction to go and that's forward. So elbows bent yeah. and at the same time, your back should be flattening out a little bit and your butt back a little bit so as well. So kind of like that. Yeah, so, yeah. And so your body is more evenly distributed between the front and back wheels. And this is important for so many reasons, whether you're going straight or cornering. For cornering, you want to be able to evenly weight your tires so both tires have grip on the ground and have traction, right? And that's a better way to do it. So now your legs are bent, yeah. so they're more supple and easier to absorb bumps, quicker to respond, and your arms are bent, able to absorb bumps and quicker to respond. And also with your arms bent means you can move the handlebars left and right, oh, yeah. like tilting the bike yeah. so much. So because as you advance, you want to be able to tilt the bike a lot more than you know, like right now, you go with the bike very gently. But yeah. as you evolve, you need to be in a position where you can actually react quickly, moving your bike and not so much of your body just by using your arms. And again, if your arms are straight, there's... So you don't want to go like go. this. Is yeah. there too much bend? Like if I'm going, if um, I'm descending, is this too much? Well, there is too much bend in the sense that your face will be getting too far over the front. Yeah. Um, but if you can compensate between uh, the front and back wheels by lowering your legs a lot, then it's not too much. Okay. Um, but you're still, you need to be able to come down more at one point. Um, and this is regards to like, if you have a really big rock or something, you want the bike to come up to your body as well. Yeah. So if you're too low already and you're hitting a big rock, the bike will just hit you and push you. Ah, okay. And that's the key. You want to prevent the bike throwing your body weight. Because once your body weight gets catapulted, you become a, a, a yard dart kind of thing, a lawn dart, you know. <laughs> you don't want that. Human no. catapult or a penguin or something. So, yeah, avoid that. Um, so, you know, it's centered between the wheels, ready to react. Yeah. And then if you think about it, okay, so then the bike's descending. Yeah. Your arms obviously will go out a little bit. Yeah. And your legs will take it up. But when you draw a line between the center of the bike and your body, you're still staying very centered in that sense. So as, as the bike starts to go forward, you start to lean back. Uh, okay. Okay. And that's, that's probably the key element is being in that position where you can lean back comfortably and not be, uh, become that projectile that yeah. we're talking about. Being prepared, especially if you don't know the terrain. Yeah. Like I, I would coach like the, you know, the top level riders on a racetrack they should know when to put their fingers on the brakes. And yeah. if, if you don't need to use your brakes, don't have your fingers there ready. Because yeah. subconsciously you'll use them and that makes you slower. Oh, so okay. we're talking about World Cup speed versus you having fun down the hill. Yeah. So, you know, I would say just don't put your fingers there unless it's time to. All right. um, but in, in this case, when you're learning a trail and you're learning your own abilities and you're evolving, so I would say, yes, be cautious and have one finger on the brake levers. So. Braking, for one, you need to be able to brake to slow yourself down because mountain biking, generally, it's quite a steep hill. Uh, and you need to be able to do that in a controlled way. And when a back wheel is locked up or a front wheel is locked up, you've actually lost some control at that point, right? So you need to be able to feel the difference. So it's braking control that you're gonna practice. And in order to do that, we'll say, okay, we'll lock it up. Tell me what that feels like but yeah. we'll do that in a safer environment here. okay we're just going to do some skids first we do it on the back wheel that sounds a bit fun <laughs> <laughs> but you know this also digs up trails so all right all the, yeah you know trail builders out there like yeah we don't dig up the trails we're doing skids everywhere but here we're just doing a lesson on a fabricated bit of flat dirt i've never done a skid on a mountain bike You're kidding me no nah. i've seen it it looks fun <laughs> <laughs> all right let's get yeah. into it okay so we'll first we'll do a little line along here of just grabbing and squeezing the back brake. Just like full, it. full. Yeah, lock it up so yeah. you know what it feels like and sounds like. All right, right. Yeah. all right. And stand up when you do it, yeah. That was kind of fun. Right? 
Now we're going to do the front wheel. All right. <laughs> Gets a little more scary because when the front wheel locks up, generally you crash. So the aim of this is Thanks, to actually, <laughs> yeah. the aim of this is to learn how much front brake is too much front brake and what that's going to feel like and how to get out of it. So, you know, try pulling on hard, harder and harder until the point where it, like do it maybe in steps. Do right. one little brake here, just pulling it hard. Then the next one is a bit slower. Actually right. grab it and lock it up, but you'll probably have to put a foot down because when the front wheel locks up, the steering goes funny and your body, your balance is off at that All point. Right. right. All right. right. Here this we go. is so to learn the end of the uh the realm of where you want to be playing right <laughs> yeah so there's definitely yeah. like uh you know maybe 60 percent back 40 percent front you're not yeah. really using the front yeah. then if you crash when you use it well the aim is to only break when you're going in a straight line yeah. to prevent yourself crashing okay yeah and you can break hardest when you're going in a straight line as yeah. soon as you start turning and if ah. you break hard you... the front wheel is easier to break traction and skid and then it will turn on you okay, oh, okay. um that's and Braking and cornering are two things that sort of need to be discussed together. But yeah. so this is just so you get the feel of the brake and what too much feels like. Really and it, you, if you lean back, you can skid, you get a lip, bit more longer of a skid. So, it'll be visually, it'll look better. So I, let me just show you, try and replicate what I do. All right. Okay. Mm. So lean back a little bit, just All right. as I'll try that as a self-preservation mode. There you go. You oh, see how you're moving your body around? Now yeah. Okay. Well? I felt that. Yeah. Like you kind of uh. <laughs> like you push back, and yeah. yeah. No, it's good. Along here, we'll stick to where, okay, so we're removing some of the variables. We'll stick yeah. to, we have traction here on the ground. It's flat and smooth, so it's a little more predictable. And you just practice cornering, like leaning the bike. So when you corner, you must lean the bike. So you just okay. want to like kind of... Yeah, your feet yeah. should be flat, okay? Your pedals, yeah, crank flat. should yeah. be flat, okay? Even, even to the ground, okay? And you'll just, you start by just riding along and you just lean left, lean right, lean left, and you just do some just snakes down the trail. All right. Okay. Then after that, we'll go to the point where in most circumstances, it's best to put your outside foot down. As in, if I'm turning left, the outside of the corner is on my right. Yeah. It's best to put your outside foot down. Yeah, that's Not what... in all circumstances. Yeah. This where it gets really confusing. Okay. Um, so then we'll do a run where you do outside foot down and you'll flip outside foot down. Yeah. Outside foot down. Which okay. which what you do in road cycling when you're cornering. Yeah, it's it's the same in any cycling. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. That was fun. I felt it. I you mean, felt it. You yeah. can feel the bike. Doing you can feel what the bike. Do, right. Because a, a bike, you know, with those two rotating wheels, there are certain things it wants to do, and you need to feel that. Well, because um, I found when I was descending that I get really twitchy on the brakes. Yeah. But I feel like there, if you just let the brakes go and you kind of just feel the bike and yeah. kind of, I mean, it's just a path. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. But I but, felt better. Yeah. This is the next step though, which we'll do in a whole nother video because it's such an elaborate thing is like, we'll, we'll go on to dirt and practice it on dirt. And this, this, this is a sort of drill, doing this on dirt, yeah. the, the most elite, like the pro riders would do Really? It. If you knew you were going to a muddy race, yeah. you'd find some mud and just oh. do this on mud. Or if you knew you were going to pea gravel in Western Australia, you'd, you'd find some marbles and you'd go <laughs> right on marbles. Should we give it um, on the trails now? Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, okay, we'll come through these bottom S turns here and you can see if you can feel the difference right. of-, of No know, braking as well? Um, if you can. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's up to you. You <laughs> do your braking before the corner. Before the corner. And you can keep your fingers there if you feel the need to. And, and then, then you'll lean into the all right. outside foot down. And outside foot down. Outside. Yeah. All right, we'll give that a go. Yeah. Look at him go. <laughs> I felt really good actually. Minus kind of <laughs> messing up the corner of it. when you're riding. <laughs> I almost cooked the corner. I think I did. You almost what? 
cooked the corner, but I felt a lot better. Oh, like I want to. You look bang on in that in that one. And I kind of want to give it another give it another go. Okay. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> Excellent. Yes. <laughs> I think that's it. When I I was kind of scared at the top yeah. when we first did the the original run, but like you kind of mm. warm up. Like I feel like. Mm that's a good tip is like just keep r repeating with yeah. the new yeah and that is one of the keys for all of these little things we're talking about is repeating on a familiar piece of terrain where you can practice your skills and build yeah. your confidence and you can take those skills and apply them on different bits of the track but if you're if you're trying to learn a new track whilst applying new skills it gets very complicated so isolate a little piece like this just repeat and repeat repeat until you feel better and better and better and the and then, fit was really good too like i noticed when you drop the seat i felt a lot better like more stable on the bike because i was kind of up my knees were crouched like this and yeah. like i didn't have this you know being in places where i didn't want it yeah um and so i can definitely see like the added value in a dropper post mm -hmm. like the d6 or seven which would be nice yeah um well, what's what's next? Do you want to do it again? Just, I, yeah, just one more time. time. <laughs> we didn't have to film it. Just All right. Well, <laughs> that was so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Now you do it again. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well. That was fun. <laughs> Next, let's throw a few more obstacles into the mix, right? Oh. So if I've had like smoothish corners and some dirt corners and some bermed, pebbly, bouldery corners, yeah. now let's throw like some inline boulders or rocks or roots or something like that where it's more of an obstacle as opposed oh. to a corner. So most obstacles, they kind of require the same approach. One, you have to see them. So going back to your body language and your position on the bike and what you're doing with your head and everything so you need to see what's ahead of you yep. especially if you've never ridden the trail so eyes a little bit forward as things are going under your wheels you should have already processed what to do with them but you know depending on the speed depending on how far you look in front okay so you're approaching this obstacle which is a log crossing the trail and a, an obstacle could be a dip or a drop or a bump or something and it's going to require you to move your body in a certain way and to let the bike move around underneath you okay so as you're approaching this the bike is going to come at you yeah right so you need to be in a position where you can let it come at you and you almost want to anticipate that even encourage it to come towards you especially if this log was higher you would actually have to pull the front wheel up to it okay yeah. but we're going to start with an easy one this one you could just ride straight over but the more prepared you are for it the easier it'll be and the less chance it can deflect you. And this one's even more tricky because it's at an angle. Yeah. And if you deflect off an angled root or log, it'll spit you off the track. Okay, and quite often front wheel first, which will put your face on the track. Okay. Yeah, so we don't want the, that. Yeah, the more planning for this obstacle, the better. Okay. okay. And the squarer you can hit anything, the better. So if it's oh, at an okay, angle, yeah. try and turn. Okay, so try and hit it square. You'll be leaning back a little bit, but not too far because yeah. You need to be able to let the bike come back to you and then back to normal position. Should okay. I have the pedals flat? Yes, so not... flat in this position yeah. for sure because anything down where you have obstacles, you run the risk of hitting your foot on it and that'll yeah. throw you again. Anything okay. where you hit something unprepared, it'll throw you and probably throw you in the wrong direction. Okay? Right. So pedals even, eyes forward, legs and arms bent, ready to absorb it first with the hand, yeah. that's most importantly. The back end is not as important, but yeah, as, as the back wheel hits that, yeah. you want to make sure your, your legs are ready to react to an impact at the back. And you'll just roll straight over this in the direction you want to go, that yeah. you intend to go, as opposed to the direction that log wants to send you. So just keep a, enough momentum to roll through all of this. All right. Okay, so that means checking your speed as you approach. Uh, too slow, you'll hit this and stall, okay? Yeah. So have enough momentum so you can roll through it. Cause mm -hmm hitting anything always slows you up a fraction yeah so know how much speed you're going to need to get through to the other side okay okay all right sounds yeah. good and and like to go up another level as your wheel comes over this rock it's actually good to push the wheel back into the other side okay, okay. this is as we evolve into these next skill lessons like before i'd ever teach you how to jump and i know you said i want to learn to jump now <laughs> yeah <laughs> We're going to teach you how to stay on the ground first. Yeah, okay. And until you know how to stay there, then, then you're not allowed to learn to jump. All right, <laughs> <laughs> All right sounds good. 
Uh, let's give it a go and we will use that technique. How was that? All yeah, right. I mean, you did the right things. You, you know, it hit you, you deflected, you reacted, you pushed it down, uh, and you saw how it bobbled you a little bit too, right? Yeah. So you understand the the importance of having enough forward momentum so you keep rolling in the direction. And so the next time you do this, I'm assuming you would a little faster. Yeah, I mean, I bet go back and do it again, and I'm sh I'm assuming you'll you would have learned because you controlled it then. Yeah. Now you know what to expect, and this is about repeating as well. Well, that was. <laughs> you got this. You got it. There you go. Let's Time. uh the t the segment. <laughs> Here it is. Let's uh yeah. give it another crack using everything you taught me. And then we'll see if I went quicker. We'll release I feel I feel later. like I'm going to be because I I just feel a little more comfortable. But you're going to stay bike. on the bike. Yes, that's yes. the thing. Yeah, yeah. I won't yeah. push it to the max. I'll just have fun. Yeah. and uh, give it another crack. It's about the journey. That's it. Yeah. All right, got it, focus. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> All right, now time for a wheelie. No. Yeah. <laughs> I feel great. Um, that, was, that was a lot of fun. And it's funny because when I picture downhill, I don't think people are out of breath. <laughs> yeah, this is doing panting, right? I'm like, yeah, I guess you get the adrenaline going. Um, I felt a lot more confident on the bike. There was a point there where I didn't use the brakes. You know, I was like this. Yeah, I mean, I want to I go again. Uh, <laughs> Greedy. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, thank you so much for, for teaching me those tips. And I mean, there's a lot of value in that. I'm um, excited to see what you're going to teach me on the next episode. Yeah, that's good <laughs> practice because practice is fun, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And Wasn't that's that it. fun? Yeah. That, was, that was a lot of fun. Um, cool. Well, that concludes this episode uh, with Scott. And again, if you like it, subscribe, uh, leave a comment, and let us know what you want Scott to teach us next because I mean, He's seriously a wealth of knowledge. Um, so anything you want to know, we'll, we'll make a video about it. Depending on the comments. We might get too many comments. Mm. Yeah, that'd be good comments. Not well, about his socks. No. <laughs> um, thanks, thanks so much for tuning in and we'll see you next time.